greeting everyone from Switzerland. And so uh, this week, or yeah, during the Launchpad program, I've been focusing on measuring the actual uh, IPFS network. This part is going to go uh, yeah, very technical, so going in Kademlia implementation and K-buckets and XOR distance and all this stuff. So if you feel lost, it's okay. You can come back at the for, for the next uh, presentation. So yeah, I strongly recommend to reading the Kademlia paper to understand better the, the, the content that is going to come. And I computed, so I gathered and computed the all of the data very quickly, so it totally may be uh, accurate, and there may be some human error in it, so uh, please don't use the data or the graph as they are here. I'm happy to provide more graphs um, later on if you're interested. So the goals of yeah, measuring IPFS, and more specifically the DHT, and so the um, yeah, the routing table uh, of the DHT is to understand better um, how the routing works uh, in practice in Kademlia. So we know theoretically how it works because there was this great um, research paper, but in practice, I'm not aware of a deployment which is larger than IPFS for Kademlia, so that would be interesting to get to know more about. Um, we want to detect if some K buckets that um, are not full um, are missing some of the peers that should be included in this bucket, which may result in um, a degraded uh, performance. Or uh, we also want to measure the ratio of uh, dead peers that are in the routing table. So if some of the peers are still in the routing table but are not reachable, they are useless. So we want to replace them by uh, new peers. And we also want to verify. Um, so one of the property of Kademlia is that each node has to be aware of the 20 uh, closest nodes. And um, so we want to know if they actually know the, the 20 closest node or if they are missing some of them. And the goal in all of this is to understand how it works to propose an improvement and eventually make IPFS faster. Some words about the measurement. So I use the Nebula crawler which was built by Dennis, an external collaborator. A very great tool if you want to do some measure or just explore the IPFS network. Um, I gathered the data on April 27th, around 10 UTC. And so uh, on the data, so while measuring the, the while yeah, crawling the peers and their uh, routing table, um, the crawler was aware of uh, 30,000 peers, and approximately half was online and half was unreachable at the time. I just wanted to, so in the last few days, to just make some graphs, and I don't know how meaningful they are, but that's always nice to show in a, in a demo. So th that's the filling status of the K-buckets. So as you can see, it starts from uh, yeah 220, so I did cut the first ones because they are not useful as they're, they're going to be empty and only the last buckets are going to be full. And we can see, so from bucket approximately 241 until 246, we have an exponential growth and then it is capped to 20, which is a parameter of Kademlia. And so we can see that um, for the smaller bucket, let's say starting from 226, to 241, we have a few exceptions uh, that, uh, so some of the neighbors uh, know some peers that are really um, yeah, close in the XOR distance. And when we go a step further, we can see then it's mixed so the buckets are not full, but are getting full. And on average, it is quite stable, as you can see the um, 50 percentile and so it's growing, and so starting from the 248th uh, bucket, um, so we have the so the yeah, like uh, even seven yeah, everything basically is all of, of the buckets are full, and the points you can see are outliers. But out of 30,000 peers, that's not that's not a lot. That's uh, the the count for the dead neighbors. Um, so what we can see here, so that's an average, so a ratio which was amplified to fit the actual number of peers. 
So the first two peaks are just noise because it's where uh, the nodes don't have a lot of contact, uh, a lot of uh, yeah, peers in those buckets. And so if the peer is, off, is offline, it's not going to be replaced and we're going to have a yeah, 100% of the neighbor. But what is more interesting is uh, starting from 248 buckets. And we can see that it is lower and that's the data we actually want to measure. And so we want to understand, so that's the average of the neighbor for all of the peers. Um, and we want to understand why the, those peers are not replaced. And it is good that this rate is low, but we want to have it lower um, and to reach zero for maximum efficiency. And so, yeah, that's about what I have for now. And I'm happy to share more results when I have some.